Hi there, my name is Lisa Chapesky and I'm the District Coordinator in Delta for Career Education and Career Programs. Today I'm going to go over some amazing options and opportunities for students in the Delta School District. The purpose of career education is to spark and support all students to find their own unique career and life journey. Career education is required every year from K to 12. In high school, students are required to take both the Career Life Education in Grade 10 or 11, as well as the CLC Capstone. Both of these courses are required for graduation. The purpose of this session today is to go over the career programs options for students here in Delta. That's the hands-on experiential learning. The first thing that I'll go through is work experience. The second and third are starting your apprenticeship while in high school, and that's through the Youth Work and Trades Program and the Youth Train and Trades Program. The last thing that I'll go through is some new dual credit opportunities for our students. There's some amazing things that they can start while in high school. Students have to apply for their program before spring break of the current school year. And then what we do is we go through the application process, we go through interviews, and we'll select students to enter programs into the following school year. We have to request our seats from the post-secondary institutions a year in advance. So that means that students who are going to be uh, graduating in June of the current school year unfortunately cannot apply to take a program the following year. Work experience is one opportunity that students can participate in this real life learning. Work experience is where students work with a teacher and a cohort of classmates, and they learn about work safe procedures, resume and interview skills, and all the practical tips on working through a new job. After completing the coursework, students will go into the field and work for 90 hours in a placement of interest to them. I want you to be aware that some placements are harder to get into, such as those in the medical profession. This is where we ask students to work with their family and friends to help find a placement of that of, that is of interest to them. Sometimes having the connections into some specific workplace is really necessary to help a student go into that specific work site. Sometimes students have never had a job, so working on communication skills, listening and taking directions from somebody other than a teacher or parent, and even getting up for a routine of work placement is all new learning. Being accountable for your actions, communicating with peers and supervisors are all useful tools to learn no matter what career students enter. Examples of placements could be with an accountant, physiotherapist, teacher, something in the trades or technology, or even places like Science World and UBC. There's so many different choices for students to receive either one or two high school courses through work experience. As I said though, some placements are harder to find due to the nature of the job, so teachers do ask for support. If some of these things might be of interest for you, all schools have career programs facilitators that students can go to and reach out for more information. In addition, there's so much information on my website and I'm going to guide you through that at the very end. The next two opportunities that I'm going to talk about revolve around apprenticeships. Now, an apprenticeship requires two parts. First of all, the working component under a Red Seal journey person. And the second is going to post-secondary and completing that coursework. So a typical apprenticeship lasts about four years in time, and that includes the hands-on working as well as the post-secondary component. If students are interested in apprenticeships, they can check out the ITA Youth site at youth.itabc.ca, and there they will find over 100 trades. And when the students go to that site, they can look about different trades. They'll hear about what they do in those trades. Um, they'll see some videos on some of the trades in there, as well as what a typical environment might look like. So if you're a hands-on learner or if you're interested in the skilled trades, um, I highly suggest you starting um, to look at them now while in high school, especially since you have the chance to start it on your career this early. So now that you know a little bit more about what an apprenticeship is, I'm going to speak about who the ITA is and their important role that they play with us. The ITA is the Industry Training Authority. They are the ones that coordinate all of BC skilled trades here. So they're a really important part to an apprenticeship program. They work with employers, they work with apprentices, they work with industry, they work with the post-secondary training providers, uh, they work with the government as well as us here at the school district level. They are the only ones that can issue the credentials and they also help support the students through their apprenticeship program. 
In addition, they are the one that sets the program standards. 70% or higher is required for successful completion of all ITA programs. Now, I know that that sounds like it can be a high number, but rest assured that um, the students will be in good hands with all the post-secondary instructors. Um, and I'll go through some tips a little bit later on on how to make sure that they're going to be successful. But one of the things that's really important to understand is whether you take a program at BCIT, it's going to be the same things that you're going to learn at a different institution such as Kwantlen. So no matter where you are, all of the material is all of the same as well as the same expectations. So 70% or better, no matter what post-secondary institution you're at. So now that you know what an apprentice is, as well as who the ITA is, I'm going to talk about the ways that you can start building your apprenticeship while in high school. The first way is through the Youth Train and Trades program. This is the technical training component, also known as the post-secondary, um, and you can start it in high school. So if students apply into the program and are accepted, they're going to be receiving dual credits. So not only are they going to be receiving the Ministry of Education elective credits, they're going to be receiving the ITA certification for that trade, should they be getting 70% or better. Um, there's lots of information that I'm going to go through um, on the website on how to apply and what to do. But also remember that each school has got a career programs facilitator that students can go to for more information. Here is a complete list of the programs that the Delta School District has partnerships with. Just a reminder that students need to be a current Delta student and must continue to be a student in the year that they are in the program. This means that students who graduate in June cannot apply for the following year. So here we have the 12 train and trades program options. We have anything from an electrician to a commercial painter. And yes, a commercial painter is a red seal trade. So if you're a hands-on learner, I recommend looking at the details of each of these careers as you never know what might be of interest. If they are, are of interest to you, I really suggest that you book an appointment with your career programs facilitator at your school to help navigate the application program, uh, process. Students will need to apply into the program and application does not necessarily guarantee acceptance as some of our programs are very competitive. Once a student applies, we look at the prior course history, especially with ADST electives, math and English, and in addition, we look at the student's attendance while in high school. From there, they're going to be given interviews and asked further questions about their interest of the program that they're applying into. If a student is accepted, they're going to start their program while in high school, which is amazing. In addition, as I said, they're going to be receiving the dual credits as well as the ITA certification, and this will all help their Ministry of, uh, of Education graduation requirements. One of the biggest benefits is that if a student is accepted, the tuition is paid for by the school district. How amazing! And in all honesty, that can be up to $3,000 savings for the student. Students and their family are going to be responsible for books, the personal protective equipment, and any other materials that they're going to be keeping at the end of the program. I'm often asked how students can be successful in a post-secondary environment while they're still in, in high school. Well, it's going to come down to the student themselves. They have to arrive each day on time. They have to be in class every day. Missing one day of post-secondary is like missing an entire week of high school. So you can see how easy it would be to get lost. If a student has to be absent and we really, really, really discourage absences, um, they need to contact the instructor immediately and also communicate the reason for their absence. There's not going to be any cell phones in the class. They're going to have to be listening. They're going to have to be doing their homework each and every day. Some of the programs require two hours or more of studying. So not only are you reading what's going to be coming the next day, you're going to have to be reviewing what you learned the previous day to make sure that you know what's going on because so many of the different skills are built upon. So what you learn today will be expanded upon tomorrow. In all programs, safety is the utmost of importance. So the first part of a program is all about safety and then they get into like the more fun stuff after, but the safety component is really, really fundamental. One other thing is that students are considered adult learners. They're going to be the ones that have to get to and from the post-secondary themselves. Are they going to be driving? Are they going to be taking a bus? So making sure that you plan out your routes and make sure that you're arriving each day on time and prepared. 
So I've spoken about the post-secondary component of an apprenticeship program. And another career program option is the working component of it. And that's called the Youth Work in Trades. Students are hired as an apprentice and they need to work 480 hours of paid work in order to get the 16 graduation credits. If a student works 120 hours, they're going to be eligible for four graduation credits or one high school course. One important note that students need to be working with a certified journey person in a place that has WorkSafe. Now those are really two important points for us here at the school district so we can help students find placements but ultimately they're going and they're applying for a job just like that they would any others. Sometimes we have contacts for people that are looking for different employers but it's really going to be up to the student taking their resume and going and applying for different jobs. A lot of apprenticeships start with family or friends who are connected in some businesses so reach out to your career program facilitator at the school um, if you have somebody in mind. All of the hours that students earn while on this work and trades program will be going towards their apprenticeship hours required if they're going for the Red Seal. After working 900 hours, a student can be eligible for a thousand dollar scholarship. That's if they've maintained the C plus average in their grade 12 year, as well as completing the youth work and trades coursework. This program is meant for students in grades 10, 11, or 12. And I really caution students who are in grade 10 going into this program because you need to be able to get to and from the job sites. So that's something that's going to be the student responsibility. Again, go and see your career program facilitator as they can help you with this process as well. Delta also has dual credit programs that students can apply into. The first one is the Computer Aided Design and Drafting Program, also known as CAT. It's in partnership with Kwantlen Polytech University. Here, students will attend two evening classes per week throughout the entire school year at KPU at their Cloverdale campus. Students will have an opportunity to earn up to four high school courses and a Kwantlen Polytech University citation in CAD technologies. This program is designed to develop and enhance practical skills, increasing students' knowledge for a successful CAD career. There's going to be so many different career opportunities should students want to pursue this after high school in the areas of architectural, engineering, and manufacturing. A few years after graduation of a CAD degree at post-secondary, uh, students can go into sales, customer service, production, estimating, or a whole bunch of different self-employment opportunities. Students have an opportunity to apply to be in the Early Childhood Education Dual Credit Program in partnership with Delta Continuing Education. The program is four weeks long, starts in July, and if successful in the program, students will be eligible to apply for the ECE Assistant Certificate. During the program, they will hear from a variety of people in the field, collaborate with other like-minded students in the district, and even develop a resume to help focus on the skills and accreditation they receive while in the program. In addition, students will gain credits towards a Delta Basic ECE Certificate if they wish to pursue their education through Delta Continuing edu Education. The Early Childhood Education Program prepares students to work with children in a variety of environments. Students will acquire the knowledge, skills, and attitudes necessary to work with children in a variety of situations. Students who choose to work as an ECE have some key traits such as enjoy working with children, have strong communication skills, and they must have a willingness to learn. Students must be registered in a Delta school in September of the next school year, and students graduating in this June cannot apply. Applications for the program are due before spring break. Young Entrepreneurs Leadership Launchpad, also known as Yale Canada, has teamed up with Simon Fraser University's Chang Institute for Entrepreneurship. Yale graduates who complete the program with a B or higher will receive credit towards high school graduation and be eligible through university credit for SFU. Students do not have to plan on continuing in business and can still apply for SFU credits regardless of what faculty they choose to enroll in. Yale brings engaging entrepreneurs, community shapers, and innovative companies together through unforgettable learning experiences that will inspire students and prepare them for the real world. 
The Yellow Program is offered to students entering grades 11 or 12 from all high schools in the district. Students will learn core concepts of entrepreneurship. Topics that will be covered are design thinking, resiliency training, marketing, and financial projections. A diverse selection of inspiring entrepreneurs and business leaders will also join the class to share their stories and advice to our students. This is a great opportunity to participate in a, in a unique program offered by the Delta School District, Yale, and Community of Partners. So if you're interested in applying, do so before spring break. In summary, here are the options available to Delta students. Work experience, which is 90 volunteer hours per course, and students can earn two courses in hopes of gaining some insight of what a career path might look like. The two apprenticeship paths are the work in trades and the train in trades, and you can start both of those while in high school. And then we have dual credit programs such as CAD, Early Childhood Education, and the Yale Entrepreneurship class. If you are interested in any of the career programs that I spoke about today, go and book an appointment to see the Career Programs Facilitator at your school. They're there to help navigate the process, whether it be work experience, train in trades, work in trades, or even the dual credit programs. They're there to help and they're lovely people. In addition, every school has got a career and post-secondary advisor, and they are the knowledge keepers of the post-secondary requirements, but they also know so much about scholarship opportunities. So pay them a visit and do spend the time filling out those scholarship opportunities because you just never know when one might come your way. I recommend both parents and students really looking at the Delta District Careers website as well. So here's a little bit of an overview about what you'll see. When you first log on, this is going to be the landing page. And from there, you can see all the different headers along the top, um, some of which won't pertain to you, but the two that I'll go through today are the parent information page and the programs page. So I'm gonna start with the parent information page uh, because this page has got so many different resources for you to find out information about graduation, about different program options, financial aid. Um, so they're all on this website here. So the education resources are at the top, Say you're interested in learning about what the graduation program credits are required, you can click on this grad planner and it'll bring you directly to the website to talk about what credits are needed. So it's all hyperlinked. The other sections are the apprenticeship sections, the employment resource sections, and the financial aid resources. So the Student Aid BC website is great for students who are graduating and looking at carrying on at post-secondary. The employment resources have got some things on WorkSafe, um, about access, about Employment Standards Act, and I want to draw your attention to the WorkBC site because this site is amazing for diff exploring different possibilities, learning about different possibilities, and really honestly looking at things that you didn't even know um, might exist. So this is the WorkBC job board on where you can find jobs. If you go up here, the WorkBC Career Toolkit is another great resource um, for exploring. Here they have the Career Trek videos and there's over 140 Career Trek videos. So if you click on this career site A to Z, it's going to pull up so many different occupations and talk to you in the day of the life of that occupation. So account managers, architects, bakers, biologists, um, they're all pretty short, around five minutes long. They're really teenage friendly and engaging and provide a bunch of practical information. The last page that I really wanna draw your attention to is the ITA Youth site. I've spoken so much about all the different apprenticeship opportunities here in Delta. So if you click on the ITA Youth site, you're gonna find even more information about the specific trades. So this is the youth site. It's a great page. It's really engaging for kids to look at. If you scroll down to this explore your trades A through Z and click on that, it is going to pull up a whole bunch of different trades for you to explore a little bit further. These are all red seal trades. So say you're interested in becoming a plumber. You can click on that. All of the pages have got a very similar format. They're going to talk about what you do, what the skills are, what you're going to learn in the post-secondary component and while on the job, what the earnings are, the work, who you're going to work with. Some of them maybe even got a short little video about the day in the life of a specific trade. And then if you keep on going down, there's some related trades. 
So if you have a hands-on learner, somebody that really likes to get out and move around and is considering a skilled trade, check out that website too. The other pages that I want to talk to all revolve around the Delta programs. So if you come over here to the header and look at the Delta programs, you're going to see the programs that I was speaking about earlier. Work Experience, Train and Trades, Work and Trades, Early Childhood Educator, CAD, and YEL. So let's start with Work Experience up at the top. If you click on the Work Experience tab, it's going to have a little video here that you can watch. It's just a little engaging video about how it works. Um, and then it has the words about how it works, what do I need to start. You can click on these to open up even more information, talking about when the benefits, when it's going to be scheduled. So if you're learning about work experience, this is the place to go, as well as speaking with your career programs facilitator. I'm going to skip train and trades and come back to that for in a second. Work in trades is the working component about the apprenticeship. So if you click on that, yes, we are in partnership with the ITA. It talks about again, what do I need to start? When do I start talking about the benefits? And again, there's a short little video about how it works. If you're curious to hear from a person perspective working in the trade, here's some more videos um, specific to an employer that we work with directly. Under the district programs, the second part is the train and trades apprenticeship. Now, this is a really important page because this is an application process. So as I said, applications are due before spring break. You can find an application form here. All you'll have to do is click on that and it'll download. Um, another thing that you want to do is maybe watch a little video again explaining the way the Train and Trades program works. These are all the partnerships that we have um, agreements with BCC, Kwantlen, BCIT, Finishing Trades Institute, and of course the ITA Youth. If you scroll down even more, these are all the partnership programs that we have in which students can apply to take post secondary while in high school. So, say you're interested about um, going and learning and being a plumber. All of the pages are similar again in their formatting. So if you click on the plumbing page, it's going to pull up a page just specific to the plumbing qualifications. So it talks about what a plumber does, what they need to do to start. These are the prerequisites, talks about the benefits, talks about where the program is. So this one is at Kwantlen. It starts February to June and it's Monday to Friday. So things to think about are how you're going to get to and from the program. Are you going to be able to make it there for 8 a.m.? Because we do ask that students go daily. Um, and if there's anything else that you need to know, it, there's the link here to the ITA youth site to talk a little bit more about the plumbing trade. So there's one of these for each and every trade. So no matter what trade you go into, you can pull it up to see if you have all the prerequisites and learn a little bit more. Then if you go back to the application form, it is again right here. So these application forms need to be filled out before spring break and your career programs facilitator at the school is going to be the one that's going to help you through that process. The early childhood educator is another program that I spoke about and it has its own page as well. So if you pull it up, there's a little bit more information about um, what's going to be happening again when do I start where do I where do I go the application form is here as well same thing with CAD which is the drafting program it talks about their partnership with Kwantlen the application form is right there this is a little video about what the CAD program might look like at Kwantlen Polytech University it talks about the prerequisites and then if we go over to YEL, that is the entrepreneurship program, it has the same format. And so it's going to have the application form, a little bit more information about the program and where it's going to be held. As of right now, we don't know where the location and time is going to be. We're just in the state of flux in the turnover right now. But as soon as I know that information, it will be updated on the website. So there we have an overview of all the different career programs options available to students here in Delta. Some of the things that I want you to think about when recommending these different options are what their interests are, what kind of education are they looking at, what kind of skills um, are they looking to further develop, 
Um, one important thing is the sustainability of the career. Right now, the skilled trades are in such high demand. Um, so looking at the longevity of a career, what's it going to look like in, say, 10 years time? Think about how much the world has changed with the world of COVID and how much um, we've had to pivot and change our practices. So will the career be around for a long time? What type of personality are they? Do they like working with their hands? Do they like sitting with a desk? Do they like working with people? Um, all these things are really important considerations um, for students to look at when considering a career. So thank you again for coming and listening to all the different options and opportunities for careers here in the Delta School District. Again, my name is Lisa Chapesky and I'm the District Coordinator of Student Options and Opportunities. You can see my email there on the screen as well as our career website. Um, and in addition, just a reminder that all career programs applications are due before spring break. So either reach out to myself with any questions or there are different people inside every school called the Career Programs Facilitators to help students along the way. So thanks so much and have a great day.